Welcome. This is the first of three webinars designed for potential applicants to the fire, CL Fire Department's Firefighter Recruiting Program. Uh, my name is Hannah Costin. I'm a personal specialist in the Human Resources Division of the CL Fire Department. This presentation will give you an overview of what to expect in the upcoming application and hiring process. Afterwards, I'll be available to answer questions submitted to the Facebook comments section of this video or emailed to our recruitment email box, um, the email of which is up on the screen right now. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give a brief overview of the benefits of joining the CL Fire Department. Um, along with being a nationally recognized leader in fire and emergency services, CL Fire Department also cultivates a talented and diverse workforce by offering several employee benefits. Uh, first of all is the schedule. CL Firefighters uh, generally work eight 24-hour shifts a month with either two or four days off between shifts. So many of our members find having two days off and then four days off to be really beneficial to their work-life balance. Um, advancement opportunities. In addition to promotional opportunities, CL firefighters can also apply for a number of specialty and technical teams, including hazardous materials, technical rescue, paramedic, marine unit, and arson investigations. More information on these opportunities will be given at a future webinar. Starting salary. Recruits start at $6,800 a month with increases at 6, 18, 30, and 42 months and annual wage increases negotiated by the union. Firefighters can also earn premium pay for becoming certified in other areas, such as becoming a driver. Medical and retirement. Seattle firefighters receive a left two pension, family and medical dental insurance, vacation, comp time, and sick leave. They may also take advantage of a deferred compensation plan, four weeks paid parental leave, tuition reimbursements, paid military leave, and various employee assistance programs. Next, I'd like to review the minimum qualifications. In order to be hired as a CL firefighter, candidates must have a high school diploma or GED and a valor driver's license, be able to communicate in English, be at least 18 years old, have a Washington State EMT certification, and meet or exceed the established standards of the hiring process. Candidates may submit an application if they're not already EMT certified, but they must be certified in Washington State in order to be considered for a final hire. Because of the length of our hiring process, many candidates are able to complete an EMT course prior to their hire date. The department will periodically offer an in-house EMT course for conditionally offered candidates, but spots are limited and participation is not guaranteed. Candidates who are EMT certified in other states will be able to gain reciprocity in Washington State following their conditional offer. Application period and testing process. After submitting an application during the open application period, candidates will receive instructions on how to complete the fire team test and public safety suitability assessment through the National Testing Network. If a candidate passes all portions of the tests, the results will be combined with any applicable veteran scoring criteria and used to rank candidates on a firefighter register. Registers are typically used to hire recruit classes for at least two years. Once the register has expired, a new application period will begin. Anyone who's interested in employment with the Seattle Fire Department is encouraged to apply during the open application period as they may not have another opportunity to do so for several years. Our current application period is open until April 19th and our testing process is available to candidates until April 26th. Following the establishment of the register, the process of hiring a new class takes several months. At the beginning of the process, the top 25% of the register will be invited to complete preconditional assessments. The results of these assessments will determine who is invited to participate in an employment interview and be considered for a conditional offer. Selected candidates will need to complete several post-conditional assessments prior to receiving a final offer and being placed in a recruit class. Once a class is hired, Seattle Fire Department HR will refresh the hiring list adding names from the existing register and begin the preconditional assessment process again. Hiring processes typically take at least six months from start to finish and four classes are usually hired from each firefighter register. Regarding our current process, we anticipate the register will be established at the end of June of 2022, so the hiring process will begin in July.
The first step in the hiring process is for a candidate to complete and submit an employment packet, which will include their job history, certifications, resumes, and any additional materials they wish to include. Candidates will also be invited to complete a suitability assessment and a candidate physical ability test. The suitability assessment is made up of a series of questionnaires which evaluate a candidate's personal history, personality style, and emotional stability. The CPAT consists of eight critical physical tasks which simulate actual firefighter job duties and help determine if the candidates meet the physical standards required to perform in a fire service. Following these assessments, candidates will be selected to complete an in-person interview with a panel of CL firefighter employees. This interview will determine whether or not the candidate receives a conditional offer for the next class. In addition to conditionally offered candidates, the panel will also select several alternates who will be offered a position if one of the recruit candidates withdraws from the process. Following the conditional offers, candidates must complete a medical assessment, a psychological assessment, and a background check before they receive a final offer. They'll also attend a gear fitting at our services warehouse and work with our EMS coordinator to ensure that their EMS certifications meet Washington State requirements. Once they've been hired, all candidates must successfully complete our in-house paid recruit training program. Seattle was the first department in Washington State to receive national accreditation for its training program. In addition to classroom instruction, the program includes practical training in firefighting techniques and equipment use. Seattle's 15 and a half week program is known as a hands-on and drill intensive program. Recruits are evaluated daily and must successfully complete all elements in order to graduate. Following recruit school, recruits are assigned to an operations division company and complete their probationary year. Upon satisfactory completion of their first year, they receive Firefighter II certification and permanent appointment as a firefighter. The Operations Division is the largest division of the department spread across five battalions containing 33 fire stations and with an on-duty staffing of 211 members per shift. One of the main responsibilities of a Seattle firefighter is to provide emergency medical services to the public. About 80% of the emergency calls received by the department are medical in nature, and all firefighters are certified to provide basic life support. In addition, our Medic One program is staffed with certified paramedics and provide advanced life support when needed. The Seattle Fire Department also maintains an active firefighter prevention program, including regular building inspections by firefighters within each of the fire station districts. In the case of a fire emergency, firefighters identify the source of the fire, use appropriate suppression techniques, and search for and rescue victims. The conditions of a fire response include extreme heat, smoke, and working in confined spaces, all while carrying 80 to 100 pounds of equipment. Operations members will also respond to hazardous materials incidents and disasters when they occur. When time allows, members also provide a wide range of community services, including blood pressure screening, fire station tours, and community outreach. If you'd like to learn more about recruit training and working as a Seattle Fire Department firefighter, we'll be having additional webinars covering these topics on the next two Wednesdays in March at the same time. We recognize that the Seattle Fire Department's hiring process can be very complicated and very long, um, but the HR division is always available to answer any questions you have. During our open application periods, candidates can use our website to submit applications and receive updates on the process. You can also visit our website for more information at any time. Questions can be directed to sfd.recruitment at seattle.gov or by phone to our recruitment hotline. Um, that's the end of my presentation, so I'm ready to answer any questions you have. Um, like I said, questions can be submitted in the comments section of this video, or they can be emailed to our um, recruitment inbox, the address of which is on the screen. All right, Hannah, so we received quite a few questions um, in the comments on Facebook and a couple via email, so we'll just go through those now. Mm -hmm. The first one is, will it make it easier to get hired if I'm currently a wildland firefighter? Uh, yeah, I would say that any experience in firefighting that you have will make you a more competitive candidate, though it's not required in order to submit an application or apply. 
Um, but yeah, any experience that you can gain in volunteer firefighting, wildland firefighting, working in other departments will make you um, likely a more, more successful candidate in our process. All right, thank you. Next question, if we are still on active duty during the application period, is there any way to take advantage of veteran points without a DD-214 in hand yet? Uh, yeah, at any time during the register being active, you can apply veterans preference points. Um, so you're free to spend an application and then once you are um, a veteran and you have that form, you submit it to our, our fire exams unit and they'll apply that and the register ranking will be adjusted to take that into account. Thank you. Next question, where is the recruit training held? That's at uh, the joint training facility, which is in West Seattle. But yeah, West Seattle. I've been there before. All right. Um, if we have an out-of-state EMT license and NREMT card, are we good for the entire process up until the final offer? Yes, that's correct. Um, you don't need to do anything until you receive a conditional offer, at which point you'll work with our EMS coordinator to gain reciprocity in Washington State. And then we had another question about um, EMT course. Is that required to be completed prior to Academy? Um, you do need to be EMT certified before you start Academy. Um, so either through your own EMT course that you take um, separate from us or through our SFD-led EMT course, which we do have available, but like I said, it's, we don't have it in front of every class and we have a limited number of slots. So it's up to you how you gain that certification. How large was your last hiring list and how many were hired off of it before it expired? Um, the hiring list that we're currently working with, um, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I believe we ended up with a register of, of a little bit more than a thousand. Um, we hired, we've hired five, we've hired four classes from them, uh, classes of 35, 40, 40, and 55 and then we're going to hire one more class in August, and then after that class is hired, um, the register will expire. Okay, great. And then we received a couple of questions about um, the difference between being a firefighter EMT and a paramedic. Right. So can you kind of explain how we staff our companies mm -hmm. out in the field? Yeah, definitely. Um, so every firefighter is EMT certified and they're able to provide basic life support. Um, once a firefighter has been in service with Seattle Fire Department for three years, they're able to apply for our Medic One program. Um, if they're accepted into the program, they're put through um, training at the UW and they receive their paramedic license and then they staff our paramedic program. Okay. Do applicants receive additional points on the exam for additional language fluency? Uh, no, we don't have a language fluency um, point system for the register. Is Washington Fire One equivalent to the Pro Board Professional Fire Certification? You know, I'm not actually sure. I don't know the details of whether the certifications are equivalent. Um, I'd recommend that you send that question to our recruitment email box and I can reach out to someone who does know and I'll get back to you. Um, another question about paramedics, this person's asking if we have single role paramedic positions. Single role. I'm not actually sure what that means, so I don't know. <laughs> I think that all of our paramedics, how they're, how they're also firefighters as well. Right, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yes, all of our paramedics started out as Seattle firefighters, so they are both firefighters and paramedics. At this point, we don't hire just paramedics. I'm not sure if this one can be answered, but what are the minimum scores for the National Testing Network? You know, I don't actually have that information. Um, that's something that the fire exams unit is going to determine. Um, and I'm going to post, I'll post as much as I can on our website once we get it from them. Um, but if you want to email that question into our recruitment box, I'll forward it to the fire exams unit. Okay. Uh, does it matter what order you take National Testing Network and PSSA? What will the average hiring size be per academy this upcoming hiring period? Um, traditionally, our classes range from 30 to 60, depending on our staffing needs. Um, lately, we've had a lot of attrition due to people retiring due to the COVID pandemic. Um, so we are trying to hire larger classes. I'm not sure if that will continue into the next register, but coming up in August, we're looking to hire a class of maybe 80. So it could be 30, it could be 80, it just depends. 
do the results of the fire team test become available before the end of June? I believe so. I think that the fire exams unit sends the results directly back to the candidates, um, but I'm not certain. That's another question that if you send it in, I can pass it along to the fire exams unit. Is there a residency requirement for employees of Seattle Fire? No, we don't have a residency requirement. Um, the only requirement is you be eligible to be employed within the United States. Do you accept applications for people who live in Canada and do NFPA certifications completed in Canada transfer over to Washington State? Um, we do accept applications from people who live in Canada as long as they're eligible to be employed within the United States. I'm not certain about the certification transfer, but because we require all of our recruits to go through the recruit process, the recruit school, um, we don't actually have any educational certification requirements. Okay. Does Washington State paramedic certification count as Washington State EMT certification? Yes, it's EMT certification or higher, so EMTB or higher. If you are an IFSAC Firefighter 2, will it make your application more desirable? Um, I would say yes in the sense that any firefighting experience will make you a more competitive candidate and you'll likely be more successful in our process. If you are hired in Seattle, do you have the possibility for the transfer to another city? Uh, that would depend on the other department. Um, personally, Seattle Fire Department does not accept lateral transfers, but there may be other departments that do accept lateral transfers. That would be a question for that specific department, though. Okay. We'll let Hannah get a water break here. <laughs> Got some more questions coming in. Um, does Seattle accept out-of-state CPAT scores, specifically California's FCTC CPAT? Um, right now, our process is that CPAT scores must be achieved through our own process. So we send you a voucher to use that through the NTN um, process and then you complete it. So unfortunately, we're not able to accept California scores. Um, but there might be NTN sites closer to you than Washington that you would be able to use that voucher at. Um, that would be something to check out on the NTN website. I have IFSAC and Pro Board, Firefighter 1 and 2, Haztec, Officer 1, etc. However, I prefer medical only. I currently reside in South Carolina. However, I would like to relocate to the Seattle area. Okay, um, obviously you're, we don't have any residency requirements, but you're free to locate. We don't have any positions aside from paramedic where you're only doing um, medic work. So in order to gain that, you would have to become a firefighter and then become a paramedic. Okay. Uh, this is a question sent in via email. Will the panel interviews be in person or will there be an opportunity to do an online interview? We haven't decided yet. We're kind of trying to see, um, you know, what the pandemic is like in a few months. Um, right now, I would say they'll likely be in person, but we may reevaluate that later on. Okay. What is the schedule for Seattle EMT class? Seattle EMT class, um, we haven't determined which, EM, which um, classes hired from the new register will have an EMT course, except that I know the first one won't. Um, typically, we'll do them every other class, so in the winter leading up to the February class. So I would anticipate that we'll have an EMT class prior to the February 2024 class, but we might change that. I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> okay. um, will all of the National Testing Network exams be held in Seattle? Uh, no, the National Testing Network um, has several locations outside of Seattle um, for the exams in the pre, in the pr application and testing period. There is actually a virtual option, um, and then for any test, the CPAT taking through NTN after the register is established, you can take it at any NTN site throughout the United States. Okay. Um, for the SFD EMT certification option, how would one go about applying for that? So that's something that's determined um, along with the interview process. Um, so when we are extending conditional offers to candidates for their classes, we'll also extend offers for the EMT course to candidates who do not already have the EMT certification. So you don't need to apply for it separately, you just need to let us know during the application and screening process that you're not currently certified but you're interested in going through the EMT course. 
do you guys have any recommended resources or classes in order to prepare for the written exam? Um, I wouldn't say that we have any recommended resources just because it's generally um, it's math and English and that sort of thing. So I know that any GED prep book would be a good resource. Um, and I actually also just posted a firefighter exams um, prep, um, prep book on our website that will actually go into detail on that too. So look for that on our website and if you can't find it, send me an email and I'll send it to you directly. How often does the hiring process occur for the Seattle Fire Department and does it depend on current staffing levels at the time? Uh, typically we open an application every two years um, and when we generally hire a recruit class, um, two recruit classes a year. Um, but yes, we'll adjust the size of the classes and we'll adjust how often we open an application period depending on our staffing needs. If you are not EMT certified by the time you are selected to go to the academy, can you defer to the next class? Um, we will sometimes allow candidates to defer to later classes under extraordinary circumstances. Um, I would encourage you to make sure that you have a clear path to become EMT certified beforehand though, just in case we're not able to offer that as an option. If a candidate were to go through Seattle Fire's EMT class, is it paid and what is the schedule? Uh, yes, it's actually a paid opportunity. We hire you on um, as a temporary employee um, and typically, typically the schedule is uh, Monday through Friday, eight hour shifts. So. If we already have a paramedic certification, are we allowed to start directly on one of the Medic One units? Unfortunately, right now we do require um, firefighters in our uh, paramedics to become firefighters and spend about three years working out in operations before we move you into the medic program. Um, as we reevaluate our paramedic staffing needs, we may shorten that period in the future, um, but right now you're not able to jump directly into the medic program. Okay. There's a question about the governmentjobs.com site. Um, are they to attach transcripts and three letters of recommendations to the site. Um, there isn't an explanation on the attachments. Uh, we don't require any attachments during the application process. So when you submit your initial application, um, we don't need any extra materials from you. It's when we move to the hiring process and you have the opportunity to submit an employment packet that you have the opportunity to include additional materials such as certifications or re letters of recommendation. Is there a suggested or preferred college major that would benefit or better prepare an applicant for the Seattle Fire hiring process? I would say that we're not able to suggest or recommend any sort of education um, besides saying that education and experience in the fire service may make you a more competitive candidate. Um, another question about how many classes we're hiring per year. What is the contact information for the Seattle Fire Testing Department? That's going to be firecareers at seattle.gov. Will Seattle Fire Department provide a voucher for the National Testing Network written exam? Um, for the written exam, if you're referring to the fire team's um, exam, I don't believe we provide vouchers, but there's no cost, so it's free to the candidates to complete. If you're referring to the CPAT, which you're probably not because it's not a written exam, but for the CPAT, we do provide a voucher, so there's also no cost to that either. Okay. Will a recorded version of this webinar be available after it's finished? It will be. So once you are placed on the register and successful, will we get sent an invite for your CPAT? Yes, if you're placed on the register and you are fall within the top 25% of it, um, during the screening process, I'll be sending you everything that you need, employment packet, voucher for the CPAT, and instructions on how to um, create your suit or how to sign up for your suitability assessment. Okay, and I think this might be our final question, or actually there's two more questions. Uh, do I have to be vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to apply? You don't need to be vaccinated in order to apply, um, but we do require all City of Seattle employees to be vaccinated in order to be hired. Um, so that is a consideration to make. Um, but like I said, there's a long period between the application process and the hire date. So you have plenty of time to become vaccinated um, before then. So feel free to submit an application.
Um, and a clarification question from someone, when would the first class be hired um, in this process start the academy? Good question. The first class that we hire from the register created during this application period will start in February of 2023. Someone asked, did I hear you correctly when you said you don't expect to have an EMT course with a hiring class until the February 2024 class? You know, I think I'm going to take that back. I think I originally thought that we would only be doing it in the winter, but now I'm thinking we'll probably do it leading up to the August 2023 class. But might change it depending on, <laughs> on what happens in the future. But I would say that I anticipate that we'll have an EMT course every other class. Okay, great. And I think that that concludes the list of questions that mm -hmm. we've received on Facebook and via email. Okay, great. Um, well, that's about our time. So thank you so much for joining me today. It was um, really great to get questions from people. And I know they're real questions because I did not write them myself. Okay, um, so we're going to have um, other webinars next Wednesday and the Wednesday following, also at 6 p.m., um, about recruit school and about opportunities to move up and what it's like to be a Seattle firefighter. So I really encourage you to join those because those are going to be held by people who are actual Seattle firefighters, unlike me. So I hope you join us.